Hey guys, so it's Terry with Live True Coaching and today I have a couple exciting things planned and I wanted to take you along on my journey. This morning I have two stops I want to make. I have a 10 o'clock appointment to get uh, my first DEXA scan and um, after that I'm going to be getting a VO2 max test. The reason I'm going to be doing these is for the DEXA I kind of want a baseline of what my bone density is as well as I am really curious about what an accurate body fat percentage is for for me right now and I want to know where it's dispersed how much visceral visceral fat I have um, which is the fat that's inside like around your organs or if I have any of that because that's a bad marker for health if you have any of that so I want to kind of see where I'm at. <clears throat> the VO2 max test I'm interested in because <clears throat> I actually have, <clears throat> excuse me, some um, cardiopulmonary issues I've been dealing with since I can remember. So at least 25 years, really. Um, I don't expect to do well on that test. I've never had it before. I don't exactly know how they run it, but I know that it's kind of along the lines of a stress test. Uh, my oxygen output, my oxygen intake and output is not good. So I don't expect to do well on that at all. <laughs> As for body fat percentage, I'm going to guess myself at mm, like 20% at this point. I would not be surprised if it's a little bit higher. Um, I'm also going to, my very first stop is going to be at a weight loss center. The reason I'm going there is because they have a machine called InBody and I've been using that, I've used that a few times to just to test body fat percentage as opposed to muscle mass. With my training routine being so regimented, I um, am very interested in what my muscle mass is and I'm very guarded uh, with that. I really, really don't want to lose any muscle mass as I get older. So I've been kind of gauging my progress. Um, with that, uh, with diet changes and even training routine changes. So, um, oops, sorry about that. The reason I'm doing those two on the same day is because the in body they say is supposed to be one of the most accurate and it's supposed to be very close to DEXA. So, we're going to see. I'm going to test them both within about an hour and a half and I'm going to see how close they are. So, if they are very close, then I'm going to continue to do the in-body because it's a lot cheaper. Otherwise, I will probably do a DEXA scan every year or maybe twice a year, depending on how much it is. I think they're pretty expensive. I actually got a got a deal on these two together, so it wasn't too, too bad. So I will let you know when I'm there and what I'm seeing and uh, give you the, the lowdown as I go along here. Okay, so I'm over here at the Vitality Med Spa. They will check your body composition for $15. It takes about 15 minutes. Here, I'll show you the little sign. See that? So when I'm done, I will let you know what the results were. Here's the machine. Just stand on it and you hold these. And you get a readout up here. Okay, all done. I was literally in and out of there in about seven minutes. So I have my results, and honestly, I don't believe them. <laughs> I am going to be really interested to see what the DEXA says. I don't believe it because it says I'm 14% body fat. And I don't feel like I'm 14% body fat. The last test I had was in January. So almost exactly four months ago, and I've gained two pounds, and I have gained three pounds of muscle, which could could be true. That's spread over a five foot eight inch body, you know, is hard to see. My body fat percentage went down 
3%. So I'm going to be comparing this with my other tests I've had. One, two, three, four. I've had seven so far. And I'm going to see exactly what's been happening. And I'm going to, if this is true with the DEXA, I'm going to know that the thing that, that what I've been doing the last four months is working and I have tweaked my diet. I will tell you. I have um, actually decreased my fats and increased my carbohydrates. My supplementation has changed a little bit. So, so interesting. The, um, my muscle mass, what they do is they segment your body. They'll do right arm, left arm, trunk, right leg, left leg. I think the DEXA does too. And tell you exactly how much muscle mass you have in those areas. And they base that on your quote ideal weight. And mine is always more. In other words, I have more muscle than someone at my height at their ideal weight. Which makes sense. I would hope so with the amount of training that I do. It's just slightly, not a whole lot, more muscle mass. So anyway, this will be very interesting. So until I get my next test, I won't really know. We'll wait another couple hours for that. One more thing I wanted to mention here that I always think is interesting is that they always tell me I need to gain weight, gain more fat. So they're telling me that I should be gaining six pounds of, of body fat and no muscle. <laughs> I just find that very interesting. Um, so my basal metabolic rate on here also is just about 1500. So that would mean that um, in order to maintain, well, I'll say, so what that, can you see me? What that means, this light is really weird, is that if I do nothing all day long, based on my numbers, how much, it's really dark, isn't it? Based on how much muscle mass I have, I would have to eat 1,500 calories just to maintain, just to keep my body processes going if I literally like didn't move. So if you're going to be moving throughout the day, you know, you're going to be adding in a few hundred calories and if you're going to be training on top of it like me, then you're going to be adding another couple hundred calories maybe. So and what's nice about this is it also gives you kind of a gauge at how many, how many calories, if you're going to be cal calculating those, which I don't 100% subscribe to. But it is one marker that you can go by to kind of get an idea. So if you know your basal metabolic rate and you know your activity level, you can kind of gauge. So my gauge would be about 1,800 calories a day to maintain the amount of muscle mass I have if I was training and even to maybe build a little bit. So anyway, I'll get back to you when I get to the other place. Okay, so I'm all done with the DEXA body composition and bone density test and the VO2 max. That was super interesting. I'm definitely gonna be doing that again. I'll pro probably be doing the VO2 max maybe once a year and the body comp at least once a year, probably every six months, because it's really accurate. So they have me at, I'll get the exact number, I was this almost the same exact weight, because it, you know, was just an hour before that I had done the in-body, and they have me at 24% body fat. That's 10% more than the in-body that's a huge difference um as far as the other numbers go i really have to sit down and compare them <clears throat> but let's just take the body count part of the testing i would definitely say thumbs down on the in body the one thing i did like about in body was that it was accurate in showing trends <clears throat> meaning the right side of my body <clears throat> is bigger than the left side. I have more muscle mass and that's pretty normal. 
and it would show that pretty accurately. When I was consciously training my left leg, for instance, more than my right, it also showed that, because when I went back in, the left leg was almost on par with the right. It showed trends for fat deposition like I would see in the mirror when I could tell that I was gaining um, more fat or losing more fat. So it showed the trends right on target, but as far as what it was measuring, how much muscle mass, maybe how much fat mass, definitely not, definitely not. And they claim that they're within like 1% of the DEXA results, not according to these results today. So I'm in the average range for body composition as far as far as fat mass, but I have a little bit more, hold a little bit more muscle than, than most women do, which I hope so, training three days a week with heavy weights. So um, everything else there is, is pretty normal as far as where I hold it to. Women hold it more on the bottom half than the top half. Uh, so the, um, the bone density, I did really, really well. I was exactly normal range for a woman my age, so that was good to know. So that's not something I would probably have to repeat very often at all. And the VO2 max totally shocked me how well I did. There was two students in the room with the tester, and they were kind of commiserating over there and come to find out because I had explained some of my cardiopulmonary issues, especially my heart issues, and they didn't expect me to do that well. And they also assumed I, I was a runner. I don't know if I look like a runner. I'm like, no, like, I don't run at all. <laughs> I might do some hiking. I used to sprint a couple years ago, but like right now I'm totally deconditioned with, with any kind of sprinting. But I was off the charts good, and I was sh I'm shocked. And actually I'm feeling pretty good today as far as uh, my breathing goes, so they caught me on a pretty good day. My max heart rate went up to 202, which was pretty high and still be able to perform like I did. And there were just no problems at all. So they're able to tell me um, at what heart rate I should be at if my goal is to burn fat during that training session or my goal is to increase cardio, aerobic capacity rather, what my cardio training zone would be. That was kind of nice to know. I don't put a whole lot of weight into that, but it was just kind of nice to know. It also told me exactly how many calories I burned and from where it was coming from during the short 10 minute time that I was running on the treadmill. So that was interesting. I'm definitely gonna take a look at that in more depth when I get home. So the other thing I would add to the uh, VO2 max and my results are that people think they have to consciously do or add in to their regimen cardio training and maybe, I'm not saying that it's not going to benefit you, but I don't do that. I, a couple times a week, I'll do a mild to moderate walk just to get some movement in. Um, it, do, it does raise my heart, my heart rate a little bit, but I don't do, quote, cardio. My cardio is done in the gym when I am lifting weights. And that also has been shown to be very beneficial for your heart and your lung capacity because when you're lifting heavy weights you're working hard and during a set your set could last anywhere from 20 seconds to you know maybe 45 50 seconds and that's basically interval training and interval training will increase your cardio capacity and in my case that seems to be true because I outdid myself here. I'm, I'm pretty surprised. So now with that in mind, we have folks that are just doing cardio training, let's say running or endurance training or biking, and you're getting that cardio pulmonary endurance into your, your regimen, which is a good thing, but you're not getting any resistance training then. And you're, so you're missing out on the benefits, all the benefits that resistance, resistance training gives you. Especially when you get older, you want to keep your muscle mass at least that you have. Uh, so you're not going to build muscle if you're just running or biking. 
very little anyway, um, past a certain level, just because your body's going to adapt at first to be able to build enough muscle to run, but you're not going to be able to do any kind of progressive overload as far as um, building more muscle. It's just going to break muscle down for the most part. So I think it's a win-win-win with resistance training when you're training with weights, um, even body weight training like chin-ups, push-ups. Um, you can vary those to make it progressively harder too because not only are you putting pressure on your bones and you, which means you are um, make, making your bones more denser, which is what we want and which is what I have normal at least for my age and you're able to 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 keep your muscle and or increase it is what you want but you're also getting some cardio training so it's a myth that you have to do endurance training to get any kind of cardio benefit that's just not true you can get that by the way you train with weights with resistance training so all in all this was really a nice learning experience for me I'm gonna discontinue the in body for the money that I'm I would spend on that I'm just gonna do it do body composition testing less and I'm gonna go with something that's more accurate and that's the, uh, the the DEXA scan even though I don't like the idea of the even the tiny bit of radiation that it gives you for my goals and for myself it's it's worth it so that's that's the end of this testing uh, for myself and maybe I'll test the results next time I I have them done but thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.